Hey everyone, it's me again with another uh, ink and watercolor study. Um, this time I'm doing a, a study of, uh, of a flower and iris. Um, it's almost like when you're in a groove, you just can't help yourself and you just keep going. And that's uh, something I advise as well. Like whenever you find yourself, you know, you pick up a certain momentum, you just follow it and see where it goes. So here I am again, starting out really light. As a matter of fact, in the beginning of my sketch, you can barely see what I'm drawing. And that's because I hold the pencil uh, away from the point and that sometimes I use an underhanded grip and that makes it even lighter and, and allows my my motion to be really free and gestural and loose and again as I get more confident in the lines and the shapes and forms I hold it a little bit closer and uh, put a little bit more pressure on the point and then you can actually see the forms taking shape. Now when it comes to the outline of flowers with ink you have to, you know, use more care than when you're drawing other things because flowers are so, especially the petals, they're so delicate, so soft, um, so flowing and free. You want to capture that. So it's, it's important that one, you don't make your lines too bold. Um, two, you don't make them too angled and too uh, straight. You want to really capture the flow and gestural movements of, of the petals. And also you want to really minimize uh, your rendering. Um, I think when it comes to with, with flowers, the less hatching and shading and so on with the pen or with the ink, the better. The interesting thing about the, the colors of this flower is that the upper petals are more towards violet and the lower petals are more towards purple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these two colors using one mix, a mix of uh, ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta. You can basically use whatever equivalents you have, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one mix and I'm going to basically shift the proportion of each color to get more towards the blue, towards the violet or shift the emphasis towards the uh, quinacridone magenta to get more of a purplish hue. And uh, I think this is a really cool exercise to practice proportion in your mix and how to emphasize one color over the other just by changing the proportions in the mix. So I decided to add some masking fluid uh, to protect areas where I'm going to be adding a yellow afterwards. Um, it's a little bit easier to do this instead of trying to paint around the areas afterwards um, or kind of uh, mistakenly causing the colors to mix. Now even though at this point the, the layers of colors are still really light, you can still see that the upper petals already are distinct from the uh, lower petals because they have more of the ultramarine blue so they're more violet more towards the bluish and more cooler and the uh, petals at the bottom are more towards the quinacridone and magenta so you feel they're more purplish you feel uh, they're more warm um, and more towards the red and just like with the petals I'm applying a light layer to the stem and I'm just using my phthalo green and uh, a little bit of my um, uh, benzene my dazzle yellow just to lighten some of the areas but I'm keeping it really light so I'm starting to add a second layer here just to deepen the colors a bit, but still I'm not adding any additional colors um, outside of the two colors that I'm using in this mix. I'm just using the ultramarine blue and the uh, quinacridone magenta. Eventually what I'll do is I'm going to add in another color to, to push the, um, the value down a bit to make it more deep and uh, more shadowy in certain areas. But for now, a second layer is enough just to start showing some variation in light and shadow. We can now see more clearly, um, you know, what areas are in shadow, what areas are in light, and, you know, kind of like pay attention to how I'm describing the form. Then eventually I'll add some sepia to uh, deepen the values in the shadow areas. Now I'm adding sepia to the mix and this makes the values really deep, it makes the lines really dark. And uh, this is best for like strengthening and deepening your shadow areas. But you have to be careful not to put too much. Um, instead what I do is I use less water in my mix and uh, just by adding a little bit of the sepia it makes the values really deep 
deep enough for my shadow areas because you don't want to make it too too deep or too dark to the point where it actually flattens the area or seem unrealistically dark you want to be able to uh, deepen the color enough so that you still see the color Now when it comes to painting the stem of the flower, sometimes you have to let the, the color of the flower kind of bleed into the stem. And how I do that is I, I basically wait until the green part of the stem is dry and then I just use a light glaze of the, um, the color of the petal and kind of paint over it. So it will create that natural kind of uh, appearance you see in flowers where the stem actually has the color of the flower bleed into it a little bit and uh, it really makes it a, little, a lot more natural and captures the richness of colors that you see in nature. I know it's really challenging but I can't emphasize it enough leave your details for last. This is the part of the painting where after you've addressed all the major aspects like light and shadow, you know, uh, establishing the color relationships and so on, that's when you start having fun with all the details. So it's at this point I remove the masking fluid and you have to make sure that the layers of colors underneath are dry, are properly dry because you don't want the colors to mix and especially in this case where I have yellow and violet, you know, they're complementary colors so I'd actually end up creating a gray. And I want my yellow to still remain vibrant and bright and, and really, you know, contrast from the, um, the purple. So after I have the yellow dry, then I can go in and accent the areas around it to fill it in with the deeper values um, of purple and so on. But the point is, is that you don't have the colors mix. At this point, it's just time for touch-ups. Um, I just go in, uh, reinforce the outline in areas that I think needs it. Um, I may have some ash marks here and there, um, add some little details, strengthen the shadows a little bit. And uh, But I make sure not to strengthen the outline all the way around. You have to vary the weight because it adds to the volume. Okay, so thanks so much everyone for watching. Um, I hope you found it entertaining, you learned something, or were just inspired, you know, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. And again, I feel this is a really cool challenge. Um, just use whatever equivalent colors you have if you don't have these, or you can even use two blues or two yellows. It's basically the same exercise.